So probably the first night in almost a month that they slept with a fan on. So that must have been like heaven. Uh, anyway, on the way over here this morning, I was wondering what I was going to talk about. And then the obvious answer came, house prayer. You know, we had that on Friday. So I was looking for a scripture uh, that talks about that, and I found this is where it was led. Isaiah chapter 56, and it starts in verse 5. I will give in my house and within my walls a monument and a name better than sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord, and to be his servants, everyone who keeps the, the Sabbath and does not profane it and holds fast my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Yes. The Lord God, who gathers the outcasts of Israel, declares, I will gather yet others to him besides those already gathered. I think the scripture fits perfectly with the purpose of what Eastern Gate House of Prayer is. Um, if you haven't gotten a chance to come, you are missing out. Mm -hmm. Because the stuff that happens uh, during that time, it's out of this world. Mm -hmm. And that's the point, you know? We're supposed to bring heaven mm -hmm. to this earth. Right. We're, need, we're supposed to have supernatural experiences. Mm -hmm. And every time that we come together mm -hmm. and we push through and we worship and declare and speak the word of God into whatever circumstance has been put in our hearts, that's what we're doing. Mm -hmm. We're manifesting the heavenly realm into this earth. Right. Uh, you know, we've been talking a lot about revival, and there's a lot of things that are happening around uh, manifestations. One thing that I shared Friday night after the worship, uh, it was a football team from the professional league the players gather around the pool of the hotel they were staying in to baptize one of their teammates. You know, and you're starting to see all those things all over. You know, people being ministered to, people coming to the Lord that either don't know who He is or or, or have made it their life's mission to denounce Him and deny Him to others. And try to convince people that He doesn't exist, that He's not real, but we know he is because we've experienced him. We have a relationship with him and we know who we are. We are his sons and daughters. Yes. Because he has accepted us into his family. So his, his blood runs through our veins. Yeah. Uh, there was one thing that was said, though, that it really um, stuck with me. And it was that we're waiting for. Revival, and we get to this point where we're there at the point of breakthrough, and then all of a sudden it kind of like falls back. Mm -hmm. And someone said it almost feels like false labor. Mm -hmm. So we got to continue to push through. If you haven't had an opportunity to come to House of Prayer, do so. I guarantee you, you're going to be blessed. You're going to go out of this place a completely transformed individual. You are going to have revelation. You are going to increase your knowledge, not only on who the Lord is, but also on who you are in Him. Yes, yeah. that's right. Because you are going to continue to understand the things that He has spoken to us as far as who we are, but also the authority that we have yes. when we speak His words Amen. and things manifest yep. in this earth. So. That's what I have to say this morning. Yes. 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 With that, anyone has any prayer requests or testimonies they would like to share?
Yes, Peter. I uh, just need continued prayer for my uh, co-worker's mom who's been diagnosed with cancer. She goes in for surgery this week. Um, my friend's pretty shaken up about it, but it's given me, you know, first of all, it's given me the opportunity to, she's a Christian, but to help, you know, explain some things that, that just kind of happen in life and, and really be able to minister. But at the same time, I mean, this is really, she just turned, my friend just turned 30, my co-worker, and, you know, this is a lot to take on at her, at her age. Anyone else? Yeah, Peter, uh, sorry, James. Uh, Confuse the apostles. I guess we all went out of the race, and the enemy's kind of been grabbing at me and stuff happening. I don't believe it because, you know, it's just a this hard. We need to realize sometimes when we say stuff, we don't think before we say things. And, you know, and so we we bind the things to Satan and uh, I'm trying to keep positive and uh, you know, God breaks through all this and get through I'm the influence and my wife and I thank you because I'll be fifty five to understand it anyway. Uh, it's just talking about how great of a generation gap you guys have been in some of the old I don't know what I would do without you. I was just going to mention too, <clears throat> James' birthday is Thursday, right, James? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to have a little cake or something for him Wednesday night so everybody can be here. Cake? Did you say cake? Cake. <laughs> cake. That's the carrot. Not carrot cake. So anyway, we're going to have a little something to celebrate that. Wish him a happy 55. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, wish him a lot of us could be back there again. <laughs> anyway, be here at the end. Mm -hmm. A lot of little parts of the Glory. All right. Also, today is uh, Suzanne's birthday. Mm -hmm. And also, my nephew is turning 18 today. Okay. And I, I sent them a message this morning and I told them. <laughs> You know, now with this age comes a new responsibility. Mm -hmm. You're now a man, and you have to put away the childish things. So uh, I pray that he gets hold of that revelation. He loves the Lord a lot, and and he has a lot of he's had a lot of revelation, and I'm very surprised about all the revelation he's had for for his age. I mean, I wish I I wasn't that. Mm -hmm. Place. Mm -hmm. I would have been in that place when I was his age, but uh, I wasn't allowed to read the Bible without being taught. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, so let's pray for them that uh, God continues to bless them and they're happy. Yeah. Yes, good. Um, I just want to encourage us all and speak and declare boldness over each person in this room to continue to. Speak the gospel of yes. good news. Yes. It is grace. Yes. And God's not a God of confusion. He right. won't tell one church one thing and one church another. That's right. So I just, I know that grace is working in my life. Yes. I know I am the righteousness of God. Yes. I know that my salvation is secure in yeah. Him. Amen. So I just pray that we keep speaking this good news so that everybody gets this thing. So they're not fearful every night they lay their head down. On the pillow. Um, is my salvation secure? Is it not? Grace covers us. It yes, covers yes. us. He's in us. Jesus is grace. Yes, so yes. if he's in you, grace is in you. Right. So again, I just want the boldness to keep speaking this thing. We're going to have people, they're going to naysay. If, but God says they will be known by the fruit. Right, right. So as long as we keep moving forward and punching forward in this grace message, I know it works. Like I said, I've applied it to my life, and it works, and that's the only thing. That's my testimony, so that's why I share it. So Amen. Anyway. Amen. That's right. Um, Friday night, I, I, I was just impressed to share this again, and I don't even think all the people are here, but as a church, one of the things the Lord revealed to me Friday night is there are offices in this church that need to be filled by people that maybe aren't even here today right. but are in this church. And they're, step, they're not stepping up due to fear, due to busyness. And, you know, 
you especially notice that it's a small church. It's true of any church, but every joint supplies. Right. And, you know, just prayer that, that these people would defeat whatever fear, whatever busyness is in the way so that they can rise up and fulfill the call of God in their yes. lives. Yeah. Amen. 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 All right. Uh, Mike, is there anything you would like to share? Or are you good? Don't get me started. <laughs> uh, all right. All I know is uh, just keep pressing through. Uh, some may be going through the midst of a storm right now. Don't worry about the storm. You have the authority to calm it. Right. I don't know who I'm speaking to. It might be one or several in this room. You have the authority to speak to the storm. Yes. Uh, as you persevere through that storm and calm it, yes. two things will happen. You'll get to the, 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 the promise that has been given to you. Yes. Uh, plus, there are people watching you, yes. watching you go through your storm to see how you react. So yeah. keep all pressing right. on. That's all i got to say. Amen. All right, well, let's stand this morning and come to the Lord in prayer. Thank you. Father, we thank you for gathering, gathering us here together in your name. We thank you, Lord, because every time you, you bless us, Lord. We are blessed. We are saved by your blood, Jesus. We are covered with your grace. We thank you, Father, for all the things that you have done for us, for giving us your word, Lord, your revelation, to continue to understand what our purpose is and who you are, Father. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the sacrifice that you made on the cross so that we could be reconciled with the Father. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for all of your all the things that have been presented here to you, Lord. All the needs, all the blessings, requests, prayer requests, Father, testimonies, declaration of who you are, Father. We declare, Lord, healing in those that are in need of healing, Father, that your hand touches them and instantaneously they are transformed, not only physically but spiritually as well. We thank you, Lord, for those that are reaching milestones in their lives in which they are now given a different standing and different responsibilities. Lord. We pray that you bless them, show them the way, reveal yourself to them, Lord. So they can continue to walk your path, Father. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, because you have declared us righteous. You have declared us safe. You have declared us your sons and daughters. And your blood now runs to our hands. We thank you, Lord, for calling us your children and your soldiers, Lord. So that we can go out into this world and continue to share your word with those that don't know you or those that do know you, Lord. giving us the opportunity to gather in your name. The Holy Spirit that is hovering over this place is anxious to reveal to our spirits your work in this morning, Lord, so that we can continue to grow on you. Thank you, Father, for giving us this great, great and wonderful gift of salvation. We thank you, Lord, because we know we can come all to you. Your spirit. Oh, the Lord. Thank you, Father. We call you Father, Lord, because you love us unconditionally. We are your sons and your daughters. Thank you, Father, for manifesting heaven on this earth. Yes. Thank you, Lord. We ask that you continue to Renew our minds with your word and your revelation, Father, that your Holy Spirit continues to light that fire inside of us that fuels us to go out into this world and continue to spread your goodness, your message, Father, who you are unto the nations. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your love and the unconditional love that you give, even when we don't deserve it. So if you have a cell phone, uh, please either turn it off or 
set it on vibrate. Uh, next Saturday, October 21st at 9 a.m., we're going to have our church fall cleanup. All hands on deck, possible. <laughs> so that we can cover as much ground as we can as quickly as possible. Amen. Yes. Any supplies we need to bring or anything, or where do we need to bring? Suzanne's bringing a sweeper, I'm bringing a sweeper, so we're covered there. If you want to bring some rags or dusting stuff, <laughs> that would help. Out, outside work, do we need any equipment for out there? Well, I don't think, I think I can bring everything we need on the time. We're in the process of trying to get some posts. We may have to haul these off and cut them up. Uh, but no, I think I've got enough equipment. No guess. Where are we going to haul them off to? Probably in my place. You don't have a bonfire? Unless somebody else wants them. You don't have a bonfire? I've got a bird to go. That's why I've got to go. Okay. But i got to see if I can get the other ones because I have to work with them. They don't have six foot. We'll see. There's still like some telephone poles down there. We can kind of circle them. <laughs> right. We are ourselves. We'll do that. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Toby, would you mind taking the offering, please? Thank you. Lord, we thank you for being here today, God. Be your people and to hear your word. For your word is life, Lord God. We count on it each and every day to yes, guide Lord. us and lead us yes, forward. Lord. Yes, Lord. We just ask that it brings it to life. In our lives, God, the world will see there is something different about us because we hang our hat on your word, God. Yes, it Lord. is our life, our life force, God. We believe in it, we live it, we trust in it each and every day, God. We just now want to take it out and share it to the world. Yes, God. Lord. Let them see you in us, Lord. Yes, yes Lord. Now, God, we just ask that you'll bless this offering, God. Bless your gift for being ever in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Worship. All right. Worship. Worship. Hallelujah. <laughs>
to believe, Lord. Help us in our unbelief, Lord. And help us to understand, Lord, even if the word from forth today, Lord, we run precepts upon precepts, Lord, building on the foundation of the chief cornerstone, the temple that you want in these people, Lord Jesus, in your kingdom.
God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Let's exalt the Lord right now. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we bless you and praise you. We lift you up and magnify you. For you are great and greatly to be praised. Lord, there is none like you. You alone are worthy of all of our praise and all of our worship. We exalt you this morning, Lord, for who you are, for your mighty acts and your excellent greatness. Hallelujah. You alone are God. We acknowledge you and worship you. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, praise the Lord. Amen. Give him a good hand clap this morning. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. May be seated. Thank you, Mike and worship team. Thank you, Roberto, for opening. Appreciate it very much. Thanks for sharing. Praise God. Thank the Lord. And uh, Sunday school, young people, you can bail on us right now if you want. Praise the Lord. Praise God. It was cold when I left the house. Warm in here. Praise the Lord. Huh? We did warm it up. Praise the Lord. Thank the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Not only am I the master of suspense, but I praise the Lord, it'll come to you sooner or later. <sighs> oh Sally and I got it. praise the Lord. It's kinda of like you know, what do you get when you mix a rhetorical question with a joke? Well, we better get on into the Word of God here this morning. Praise the Lord. Roberto, if you will, let's go. Let's begin with Psalms chapter 34. And uh, we'll read verses 3 through 8. Thank you all for being here this morning. Praise the Lord. Appreciate those of you that have come out. We've got several people missing and out of, you know, out of town and so forth. But uh, thank God for you that are here. Praise the Lord. And God be with them wherever they are. Yes, uh, Psalms 34, 3 through 8. Praise God. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt His name together. I sought the Lord and He heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto Him and were lightened and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Praise the Lord. Yes. All right, Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 29. Ephesians 4 and 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Everybody say praise the Lord. Praise Amen. Lord. All right. Last verse here. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15. 2 Timothy 2, 15. <coughs> Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. If you rightly divide the word of truth, you won't be ashamed. Right. Praise the Lord. If you don't, you, you'll be in condemnation and yep. shame all the time. So we're not trying to point out people's faults. It says study to show yourself approved. Show yourself approval. Amen. Amen. Not rejection, not, not disqualification. Right. Approval. Yes. Rightly dividing the word of truth or how to discern what's relative to the Old Covenant and what's relative to the New Covenant. Praise the Lord. The Old Covenant is condemnation because you can't measure up. You can't do all that you're required to do to be holy or to be righteous. Mm -hmm. 
why you have to have the animal sacrifices, right? But under the new covenant, co covenant excuse me, it's affirmation. So you have condemnation under the old covenant and affirmation under the new covenant. God is affirming us. We, he has uh, given us his parentage. Amen. Yes. He has made us his sons, his children. Praise the Lord. Right. He has declared us the beloved, in the beloved, in the family of God. That's affirmation. Yes. That's blessing. That's God's on our side. Praise the Lord. So, Philippians, or excuse me, uh, Philemon 6. Philemon 6. Praise the Lord. I told Sally, Friday the 13th. What chapter? There is no chapter. There's only one chapter there. It's uh, number six. Praise the Lord. The communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. The only way you can communicate your faith is by acknowledging the good that's in you. Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. So if we really understand the new covenant, our faith in Christ in us will effectively communicate the gospel, which is what Jody was saying earlier. Yes. If we understand, if we, if we are confident and uh, understanding the new covenant that Christ is in us, yes. by that knowledge, by that acknowledging and awareness, you can communicate yes. the gospel to people. Yes. You can't do it otherwise. All you're going to be able to communicate is guilt, shame, rejection, condemnation, <coughs> and so forth. Praise the Lord. I started to say... You know, here's what happened. You know, under the under the old covenant, every, there's all re, all sorts of reasons to be superstitious. I mean, there was all kinds of things that could get you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I told Sally, Friday the 13th. I'm always a little uncomfortable, although I don't. I'm not one of these that lock myself in the house and you know stay in bed all day. But I'm not super. You know, I'm not superstitious. I'm just little stitious. Praise <laughs> the Lord. It's the way a lot of us are in Christianity. Yes. You know, it's, it, we have some faith. But we don't have the faith. We don't have faith to operate the way we should because we're not confident in who we are in Christ and who Christ is in us and what He's doing through us. Amen? Right. So let's go to Matthew now, chapter 16, and we'll read verses 13 through 19, Roberto. Matthew 16, verses, verses 13 through 19. Praise God. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elijah, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he saith unto them, But who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee, thou art Peter, and upon this rock, upon this revelation that you have, I'm going to build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Mm -hmm. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Okay? So everything flows from a God-given revelation of who Jesus is and who Jesus says you are. Yes. Praise the Lord. Jesus asked Peter, who do you say that I am? Well, most people who came into contact with Jesus, they tried to figure it out. They tried to guess who might be. Maybe he's John the Baptist, raised from the dead. Maybe he's uh, a return of Elijah. Maybe he's one of the prophets. But they were all just guessing. They were just taking a shot. They didn't know. Only God can give you a revelation of who Jesus is. Unless the Spirit draws you, no man can come to God. God has to give you a revelation, right. amen, for you to be a believer. Praise the Lord. And so you could say, well, he's the, Jesus is, is the light of the world. He's the, he's the bread of life. He's the way, the truth, the life. He's the living water. He's the alpha, the omega. He's the beginning and the end. He's the lamb of God. He's the door. He's the good shepherd. Praise the Lord. He's the true vine. He's the king of kings. He's the Lord of lords. He's the savior. He's the I am that I am. Praise the Lord. A revelation of Jesus to you will produce a revelation of Jesus to others. Amen. Hallelujah. The key that unlocks the kingdom is a true, God-given revelation of who He is. Yes. Jesus is Lord. Praise God. 
And then Jesus says to Peter, now I'm going to tell you who you are. Yeah. You've got a revelation of who I am. I'm going to give you a revelation of who you are. So most of us have a, a heard enough sermons and, and read enough of the Bible and, and been around Christianity long enough and the teaching thereof that the first part of this equation, who Jesus is, is pretty well established. Most of us know who Jesus is. Praise the Lord. But that's not all there is to receiving the kingdom of God. No one told us who we were. Right. So we've been victims of identity theft. Yes. We've been taught who we were in Adam. Right. Instead of who we are in Christ. Right. Rightly dividing the word. Yes. Acknowledging the good that is in us. Jesus said, Why do you call me good? There's only one that's good. Yeah. Praise the Lord. We qualify for good yes. because the good one's in us. Yes. The God one is in us. Praise the Lord. So uh, if Adam is preached, all you get is your failures, yeah. mm -hmm. your shortcomings. Yeah. The wrong man's being preached. Yes. Yeah. Preach Jesus, yes. Yes. who he is, mm -hmm. and who we are in him, yes. and it creates faith. Yes. And people will become believers. That's the gospel. That's how it's done. Yes, Lord. Signs, wonders, miracles follow believers. Yes. Believers don't follow signs. Right. Jesus tells Peter, I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom. Because of this revelation and because now I've identified who you are, I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And the keys to the kingdom are this. Simply, a yes on earth is a yes in heaven. When it's us. Yes. When it's us speaking yes. Yes. from the revelation of who we are in Christ and who Christ is, a yes on earth is a yes in heaven. Yes. Amen. A no on earth is a no in heaven. I say no to sickness and disease. Heaven says no to sickness and disease. I say yes to prosperity and breakthrough and, and uh, relational wholeness. And heaven says yes, I, I agree. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. Christ in us. Christ spoke and heaven opened and that reality became a fact on earth. Yes. We operate the same way. We are to operate the same way. Yes. If you really know who you are, you'll say some stuff. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Praise the Lord. I remember I I've said this before, but I remember years ago when we first came back up here from Texas yeah. and we were starting a church in Ankeny at the time. We had a big tent and uh, we had a guy... Uh, Brother Bear was his name, and this guy, I'm telling you, he memorized the entire Bible. Literally. I mean, this guy could just go, he could just start with Genesis and just talk it right through. It was amazing. But anyway, this friend of mine who was also a pastor, just young guy starting out, and he and his wife had a little bit of a confrontation. It wasn't a big ugly thing. It was just what all of us that are married have, you know, from time to time. We disagree. And our wives didn't know that we were right. Yeah. <laughs> I only say that because I'm up here and she's over there. This will all change. This will all be edited when I yeah. get out of here. But anyhow. <laughs> so anyway, she said something to him. And I'll never forget. He said, uh, talk to me like I am somebody. I thought, that's good. I wouldn't have said that to my wife. But it's good. I mean, I understand it. But that's what we're saying here. Yeah. Talk like you are somebody. Yes. Amen. You, you are somebody. Yes. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. You ought to, you ought to be talking that way. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yep. Amen. Look, uh, Proverbs uh, 18, verse 21. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. They that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. You're going to eat the fruit of whatever it is you're saying, praise the Lord. All right, Matthew chapter 12, verse 37. Matthew 12, 37. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Your words, what you're saying. Yep. 
See, Proverbs also says, where the word of a king is, there is power. Yes. Yes, do. He is the king of kings, but we are kings and priests. Where the word of a king is, when you speak, there's power there. Yes. If you know who you are, if you know you are a king and a priest, when you speak, there's power coming out of your mouth, whether you understand it or not. Yes. Praise the Lord. Jesus is, first of all, king of kings, and we are kings and priests. Yes. Do you know who you are? That's the question this morning. Amen. Well, taste and see yes. that the Lord is good. Amen. Praise the Lord. When I was a kid, still, well, in fact, today, but although I don't eat a lot of sweets, um, I, I still like them occasionally, and I, I'll have them. But here's what I liked, and still like for that matter. I'm, I'm kind of in a rut when it comes to food, but this is the way it is. Ice cream, pecan pie. I love pecan pie. Cinnamon rolls. My wife makes them. The best cinnamon rolls. Oh, I'm telling you, they're great. Yellow cake with chocolate frosting. There's not many people like that, but I like yellow. My wife hates it. She thinks, who eats this yellow cake with chocolate frosting? I do. I mean, it's great. That's what I grew up with. It's good stuff. It's sweet. Those things are special, right? They're dessert. Amen. Well, when I was a kid, and it probably still is this way, although I don't have little kids. We have grandkids and great-grandkids that we deal with from time to time. But I rarely say this because I heard it all my life. No dessert unless you eat your carrots. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, of course, it wasn't enough to just eat carrots because I knew I didn't want to eat the carrots. Mm -hmm. Carrots are good for your eyes. Yeah. You've never seen a rabbit wearing glasses. Remember that when you were a kid? <laughs> carrots are good for your eyes. Well, I got cataracts, so... Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for healing me. Praise God. Yeah. Eat your Brussels sprouts. Oh, good. <laughs> They'll make you strong. Well, praise the Lord. <laughs> Eat your hominy. Now, I love grits. I love grits. But I hate hominy. Yeah. And grits are hominy. But they're processed. Ooh, God, I hated hominy when I was a kid. My dad had it, I think he had it at least once a week, just because he knew how much us kids hated it. It was like, I'm still in charge, and you're eating hominy. <laughs> oh, my God, not hominy. It'll make your hair curly. Oh, you really? I'll let you judge, praise the Lord. I don't know if any of that's true, but... I'd say eat the dessert first. Yeah. <laughs> and then if I got room for the other stuff, fine. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I might have been onto something. I may have been way more spiritual than I realized. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Yes. Kind of gives a sweetness to everything else you've got to swallow. Yes. We've been given power and authority to devour our enemies. Yes. Praise the Lord. No weapon formed against you can prosper. Every tongue that rises in judgment against you, everything that the enemy comes and tries to say, yeah, you did that, and oh, yeah, but what about that deal? And, right. you know, if you're supposed to be this, and why, why is that? You, you condemn. Yes. Every tongue that rises in judgment, you condemn. You, you are, have the authority. There's power in the king's word, praise the Lord. And you condemn it. That's your heritage. That's your inheritance. Because you are the righteousness of God in Christ. Praise the Lord. You have authority. You have power. You just have to exercise it. Matthew chapter 3, uh, verses 1 through 4. This is, this is interesting, I think. Matthew chapter 3. Verses 1 through 4. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea, saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and a leathern girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and honey. Now I read this and I think, Do we really need to know what he ate? Right. Honestly. Yeah. I mean, I know some of you were a little, you know, bored with what I eat. Do we really need this? You know? Yeah. All right. Second Peter chapter 1, verses 20 and 21. Second Peter 1, verse 20 and 21. Mm -hmm. 
Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scripture, in other words, anything written here, is of any private interpretation. But because the prophecy came not in old times by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So obviously, by definition, based on that Scripture alone, the Holy Spirit wants to communicate something to us from Matthew chapter 3, 1 through 4. He didn't just say, he's wearing... Hairy camel clothes, praise the Lord, and a belt, and eating locusts, right. and wild honey. Right. For no reason. Exactly. There must be a reason, amen, because he's trying to communicate something to us. Mm -hmm. All right, look at Numbers chapter 13, verses 30 through 33. Numbers 13, 30 through 33. Now we're at the Jordan River, right? Mm -hmm. They sent spies over into the promised land mm -hmm. yeah. to spy out the land. They come back with a negative report, except for two. The 12 went out, only two had a positive report. Only two agreed with what God had promised. Right. Everybody else is freaking out because of the stuff. So Caleb sealed the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we're well able to overcome. But the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than us. And they brought up an evil report of the land and they had, that they had searched under the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that is eaten up with the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And we, they, there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. So there's 12 spies, but 10 spies, which are the majority, amen, come back with this old covenant thinking, condemnation, yep. doubt, fear, unbelief, right? Mm -hmm. That's, that dominates much of Christianity yep. under a new covenant. Right. Praise the Lord. So a lot of Christians have the same tendency to look at how big the enemy is, how big the problem, how big the situation or the circumstance, no matter how big they are. I'm not saying they're not big. I'm just saying that shouldn't be the thing that influences. Mm -hmm. Amen. So we look at the big problem and the big issue and the big situation and how small and weak we are because we don't understand who we are, because we don't understand that God is for us and with us and nothing can uh, come against us. Amen. So... Uh, how hopeless the situation is, is what we focus on. Well, I don't care what the majority says. Praise the Lord. We are a chosen generation. We are the righteousness of God in Christ. We are a holy priesthood. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Praise the Lord. And if God is for me, who cares who's against me? Amen. Praise the Lord. It's not giant people that we're battling. It's these grasshoppers yes. and locusts yes. because they are the doubt, the fear, and the unbelief, the enemies of our faith. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Trying to keep us from entering the finished work, yes. amen, of Jesus, yes. our rest, yes. our promised land, praise the Lord, the promises of God, yes. amen. So John's message of the kingdom, the affirmation of God, is designed to eat up those locusts. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord, the fear, the doubt, the questions. They're, oh, they're giants. We're just little grasshoppers. John, his diet was locusts. Yes, it was. Amen. And he's telling us this is the diet, amen, that will get you into the promised land. Hallelujah. Yes. The affirmation of God, yes. the, the blessing of God, the oneness of God with us is what gives us the, the uh, diet, amen, of eating locusts, praise the Lord, and wild honey. We have been designed to eat grasshoppers and locusts, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen to Joshua and Caleb's words. He said, they're bread for us. They're food. That's lunch we're looking at. Praise the Lord. Yes. Numbers 14, uh, verses 6 through 9. Praise God. Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephna, which were of them that searched the land, they rent their clothes. These are the guys that said, we can do it. God's with us. Who cares? 
And they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to search it is an exceeding good land. If the Lord delights in us, then He's going to bring us into the land and give it to us, a land which flows with milk and honey. Only rebel not ye against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bread for us. Their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Fear not. It's in the, God, it's in the Bible 365 times. Fear not. Well, I don't care what it is. Don't be afraid of it. You have authority over it. Praise the Lord. For us, the promised land is the finished work of Jesus Christ. Amen. It's rest. Resting in His work. Resting in what He's already done. And we've got to enter in. Yes. Remember the honey. He said it flows from the promised land. Psalms 81, verses 13 through 16. Psalms 81, verses 13 through 16. Praise God. Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me, and Israel had walked in my ways. I should soon have subdued their enemies and turned my hand against their adversaries. The haters of the Lord should have submitted themselves unto Him, but their time should have in, endured forever. He should have fed them also with the finest of the wheat and with honey out of the rock should I have satisfied thee. Praise the Lord. Jesus is that rock. Yes. Amen. Judges chapter 14, 8 and 9. Judges 14, 8 and 9. This is a story about Samson. Remember Samson? Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. This is, uh, Samson's, he'd seen this Philistine woman in Timna, I think it is. And uh, he liked what he saw. Praise the Lord. And he was wanting to hook up with this gal. And the problem was she was a Philistine, daughter of Philistines. And, uh, and the scripture says the Philistines dominated the land. But he's got his eye on this gal and he wants her. So he goes home, tells his folks, I gotta have this girl, you know. And here's where we're at. So after a time he returned to take her, and he turned aside to see the carcass of a lion. Now he had killed this lion days before, and on the way back to her house, he sees this dead lion that he had killed, the carcass of that lion. And behold, there was a swarm of bees and honey in the carcass of the lion. And he took thereof in his hands and went on eating. So he's eating the honey that was in the dead body of the lion. The bees had gone there and put a hive in there, and so he's eating honey. And he went on eating and came to his father and mother, and he gave them, and they did eat. But he didn't tell them that he had taken the honey out of the carcass of the lion. Why? Because they were kosher, they were Jews, and if he had, you don't touch any dead thing, or you're defiled. So he doesn't tell them, hey, oh, by the way, that honey you're really enjoying, well, it's... It's bad. It's bad. You're in trouble. Praise the Lord. So he doesn't tell him that. Amen. Drop to verse 14 here. Now they had a habit of trying to trick each other. So he tells this gal's family. He said, I'm going to give you a, 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 a we call it, a, I'm going I'm to tell you a story. And if you can tell me, if you can discern what it means, if you can tell me what it means, I'm going to buy all of you wedding clothes. I don't know, that's not exactly what he said, but I'll buy you a bunch of raiment, you know, changes of, of wardrobe and so forth. But you've got to be able to do it during the feast of the, the wedding feast. You've got to come up with the answer to this thing, which gave him three days. The feast lasted seven days, but that only gave him three days to do this. So he said unto them, out of the eater came forth meat, out of the strong came forth sweetness. And they could not in three days expound the riddle. In other words, they couldn't figure out the riddle in the time that was allotted to them. Okay, the riddle is, out of the eater came forth meat, out of the strong came forth sweetness, and they couldn't figure out what he was talking about. Amen? So honey is the answer to this three-day riddle of Samson. The lion is a king, and that king is Jesus. Three days, three nights, out of the death, burial, and resurrection of a king comes sweetness. Praise the Lord. Wow. Yes. Or you could say promised land that flows with milk and honey. Praise the Lord. The kingdom is here. We are a victorious church. And the gates of hell shall not 
and cannot prevail against us. Amen. We've moved from defeat yes. to victory. The giants are bred for us. Yes. The problems, the obstacles, the things that the yes. enemy that wants to make them big so we run back, oh my God, what are we going to do? Right. We're going to eat them. Yeah. They're bred for us. Yes. Praise the Lord. Let's eat. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Leviticus chapter 11, verse 22. Your problem is your next meal. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Your, your, the obstacles, the, it, look, people are not our problem. No, it's not. influence, it's spiritual influence on those people. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. That's what we eat. Yes. Amen. Grasshoppers. Yes. Locusts. Yes. Yep. Hallelujah. Jesus. Yeah. Great. We just devour them. Yes. The fear, the stress, the worry. Eat it. Praise the Lord. Even these of them you may eat. The locust after his kind, the bald locust after his kind, and the beetle after his kind, and the grasshopper after his kind. Now I want you to just think about this. This is talking about kosher food. This is talking about what is legal for people under the old covenant to eat. Now I would, I'm telling you, unless I'd read that, I wouldn't have believed it. Because they've got some all kinds of dietary, no split hooves, uh, yeah. you know, no bacon, I mean, no pork, no barbecue, no, I mean, nothing. You, you just, there's so much stuff that you can't eat that I would have never dreamed that bugs would have been in the menu. Yeah. That they would have been allowed to eat locusts, yes. amen, beetles, grasshoppers. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Remember, these locusts and these grasshoppers represent fear, Weakness, the flesh, unbelief. Right? All right. Look at Joel chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. See, old John knew something about diet. He was baptizing people so they could get into the promised land. They were standing in the Jordan River. This thing that separates them from the promised land and the, and the outer world, praise the Lord. And what's he eating? Locusts. <coughs> And wild honey. Yes, he was. I think, you know, the next time we have communion, yeah. we yeah. might want to rethink. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> we make a lot of stuff out of this that, that isn't there and miss what's really there. Amen. Yeah. The word of the Lord that came to Joel, the son of Pethuel, hear this, you old men. I'm listening. And give ear, all ye inhabitants of the land. Hath this been in your days, or even in the days of your fathers? Tell your children of it, and let your children tell their children, and their children another generation. That which the palmer worm hath left, hath the locust eaten. That which the locust hath left, hath the canker worm eaten. And that which the canker worm hath left, hath the caterpillar eaten. Now, if you just do a little bit of... Uh, bug research, you'll find that what he's saying here is they start out crawling, uh -huh. then they start swarming, yes. then they're hopping, amen, and finally they're stripping everything. Uh -huh. Here's what we're fighting against. You're not righteous. Yep. You have no authority. Uh -huh. You have no power. Right. You may not even be saved. Right. Yeah. I'm saying the king and his kingdom are in you. Yes. And I'll have another. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Amen. Praise yes. the Lord. Yes. You are more than a conqueror. Yes. You can do all things yes. through Christ who strengthens you. Yes. Yes. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. Yes. Amen. You are well able to enter his rest. You're well able to enter into his finished work. Yes. We are designed... Praise the Lord to devour the enemies of the kingdom. Anything that comes between us and the kingdom of God. Amen. And we do it through a revelation of Christ in us, who He is, and who we are in Him. Praise the Lord. Let's wrap this up. Matthew chapter 16, verses 11 through 19. They're bread for us, guys. Praise the Lord. Yes. Amen. Matthew 16, 11 through 19. 
Now this comes just before, and you'll see that as we read on, but just before where we opened when Jesus said, Who do men say I am? Now I'm going to tell you who you are. Just before that, this is one train of thought. This is all part of one conversation. Amen? You know, there's not chapters and verses here when it's written. It was just continuous writing. So here we have it. How is that you do not understand that I spake it not to you concerning bread? They're all freaking out because they think they forgot to bring the bread on this boat trip. And they think he's upset about it. So they don't understand bread any more than most of us have. Yeah. How is it that you don't understand that I spake not to you concerning bread, that you should have beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees? What's he really talking about? He's talking about the spirit, this religious, legalist spirit yeah. of the Sadducees and the Pharisees. He says it's bread. They're thinking natural and he's speaking spiritual. So it's not connecting. Amen. So he goes on, he said, the Pharisees, the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees, then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Have you ever had somebody try to tell you you're out of your mind for believing what it is we're confessing here because it doesn't fit their religious paradigm. It doesn't fit the, the legalistic kind of way of looking at things. And so you must be nuts or you just are just really stupid or very unspiritual. When in fact the opposite is true because unless you can draw the spiritual from the natural, you're not going anywhere anyhow. You're not going to the promised land. You'll just be standing on the other side saying, boy, I can't wait to die so that I can get to heaven and get all the blessings right. when we were supposed to be participating in heaven on earth what I say here is that what's going on there what I say no to is what's no up there what I say yes to is what's yes down here yes, no. praise the Lord how is it you don't understand then understood they how he bade them not beware of the leaven of the bread but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees Praise the Lord. We're all getting ready to leave here, and it's 1130. Won't be long. You'll all be somewhere to eat, home or someplace else. I'd encourage you, if grasshoppers are on the menu, get a double portion. Praise the Lord. Order up. You may have to find a Chinese. You may have to find an Oriental somewhere. It's okay. It's all right. Just eat. They're bread for us. And I promise you this before the day's over, the enemy is going to come and tell you something stupid. Yeah, sure. And it'll be about you. Yeah. And in the natural, you may say, well, it's true. Yeah. No, it's not. No. It's right. dessert yeah. time. Yeah. Oh, taste and see yes. that the Lord is good. Eat yes. that first. Yes. Then you can take care of the rest yes. of it. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap this morning. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. God bless all of you. Appreciate your patience. Amen. Go. Put on some weight this week. Praise the Lord. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.